Hello and welcome to TV Hangover. I am your host along with Vicky, who's also your host. I always say that and I feel really bad about it. We're co-hosts. You We're take co-hosts. the lead because you're so much better at radio than I am, but we are co-hosts. Untrue. Uh, this is the TV Hangover podcast and it is episode 29. That's how old I turned last year. Oh, you're kidding me. But I'm bummed. Just kidding. Not. Um, We are doing something new today, which uh, you people who are listening have no idea about, but we are live streaming on YouTube right now. Are you sure? Because we were having major technical difficulties. (laughs) I'm pretty positive. It may or may not be working, but whatever. If you want to watch us, we're going to try to do this every week. Uh, So make sure you go to the NJ.com's YouTube channel and you can see Vicki and I report recording the podcast. Right hey, there, we're waving the cameras. Um, in studio today, we have a very special guest, Bobby <laughs> Olivier. Bobby. Hello. Bobby's here because it is American Idol finale week. The for all time. Like, for all yeah, time. Until they bring it back. Until they bring yeah. it back in two years. Wait, yeah. you guys feel like they're going to bring it back? They, they've already said they, they'll probably do a yeah. reboot of it at some point. No. Yeah, yeah it's, like, it's like when any good band goes on hiatus, when they come back, it's so much better. I don't like that. I, yeah. well, well, we're going to get into it. It's like Cher's farewell tour. That she's had multiple times. Yes. Got it. Um, so don't forget to follow us on social media at TV Hangover Show, at E underscore meds, at Vicky High, V-I-C-K-I-H-Y, and... At Bobby Olivier. That's right. And don't forget that extra I, as I did, and Bobby reprimanded me for it. Not over it. (laughs) (laughs) Cries himself to sleep every night. He totally does. Um, We also have an email address. It's tvhangovershow at njadvancemedia.com. And while it's not on today's rundown, I would like to acknowledge that last week we received two emails. Oh, that's right. We did. We did. We got one um, from Don, who's from New Jersey, who likes to remind us that he was technically the first person to ever email us. Um, Thank you, you know, Don. But it went to our junk folder. <laughs> um, and by the way, Don, I take offense to your note that I can't read more than 140 characters. I can. I read your whole email. I don't recall what it says. Um, oh, God. <laughs> but I'm sure it was fascinating. I do see, oh, Grey's Anatomy. I still watch Grey's Anatomy. And I'm glad that um, that you do as well. Uh, the other email was from Randy from hey, Randy. Pittsburgh. I got that right, right, producer Alyssa? Lisa. All right, good. Um, hey, Randy, we're so glad that you're also emailing us. Um, and you want us to discuss our favorite show. Hold on, wait, let me get this right. Oh, how did this show ever get made? Okay. Which is a good idea. Did, um, he, did he have an example? He did, The Player. That was a show with uh, Wesley Snipes. I actually didn't mind that one so much. Really? Yeah, I'm not surprised that got made. You know, high octane thriller. I mean, there are Wesley Snipes fans out there. I actually didn't have much of a problem with that one. It was canceled, of course. It, of course, it was. Yes. Um, so, but we, I'm sure there what there are things out there. So we will. If we think about it, probably, and we will. I say for next week's show, <laughs> new we segment. Do, we do. Uh, how did this show ever get made? And that's funny because we are talking about the ranch this episode. No, I know how that show got made. Um, so coming up on today's show, we're going to do some news. We're going to talk People vs. OJ finale, The Walking Dead season finale, um, and The Ranch, which is Ashton Kutcher's new Netflix show. And then we're going to do All Idol all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's get started with The People vs. OJ Simpson. That finale aired last night. Uh, we Did don't do it? I don't know. <laughs> uh, did you see my tweet? I sent a tweet that basically said, spoiler alert, he's acquitted. Yeah. Ruined it. <laughs> Hilarious. Nobody's going to watch yeah. it again. No. no. Um, did you watch Bobby? No. No, you're not a people versus. I, okay, I was watching the Bobby? idol thing. Oh, I was watching the idol the thing. The idol thing was on at 8 and this was on at 10. What's your excuse? Bobby. Oh, Ink Master is on at 10. <laughs> oh, oh Ink Master. That is no excuse. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, Vicky, what did you think of the finale? I loved it. Um, I thought that the, you know, it, it's funny that this is, you know, a Ryan Murphy joint. Um, it is so different. Like a Spike Lee joint? <laughs> yes. Okay. It is so different from all the other over-the-top um, shows that he puts out. This one had so much subtlety to it, which is funny because we're talking about the O.J. Simpson case, which is all about, like, you know, larger than life. Yes. You know, you know, you know it, it, it was, the ending was so subtle where basically they're making a case for 
um, was it worth sacrificing justice for Ron and Nicole to get these to get these allegations of what it's like to live in Los Angeles as a black person and deal with the LAPD? And I think what they ultimately came out with is no, because we're watching it now. We're watching it, you know, through the lens of everything that's happened with police brutality over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And I think they'd argue no, it was not worth it. OJ, you know, should not have been acquitted because of this. That's basically what what Johnny was saying in the in the in the final arguments that you're you're taking a stand here. Like forget about whether he's guilty or innocent or not. You're taking a stand here. Wait, so who do you think was making this argument? The Johnny show. Cochran. I no, think that, no, no, about whether or not it was worth it. I think that is the, I think the, all the conversation that they had in the end, after, yeah. uh, that was, that was the theme. Like, is it worth it for that, that Ron and Nicole did not get justice? And I think, I think as a viewer, I came away with no, it did not. Because there was a lot, and you know, obviously we don't know how much of this was scripted by the, and how much of this came out of like the books and Jeffrey right. Dupin's book, da da da. Um, so we don't know how much of this dialogue is actually real or not, or whether they're saying that to put in the context of what has happened over the last couple of years. Yeah, I thought, I personally thought that whole argument was a stretch. I don't no, think I that's, it. I think Johnny Cochran was just playing on the emotions of people at that time and to get his client off. I don't think it was any deeper than that. I really don't. So you think all that stuff they put on him? Because I think he, I think that maybe, are you saying that he really was putting it all on a plane to emotions or that... Um, in, in the show or in real life? Because in I real think, life, I think in the show, they were obviously trying to get him to make his like, I make, I'm taking a stand here. I think he took that seriously, and you can see that in his discussions with um, with Christopher Darden, that he thinks it's a flawed system and it needs to be fixed. Oh, I think that was for the show. I think in real life, he was trying to get his client off. I really do. I don't think it was anything more than that. I don't. I don't think uh, Johnny Cochran was trying to lead the civil rights movement of the 1990s. I do. I really don't. I really, really don't. Well, it worked dramatically. Though. It did work. Um, and OJ was acquitted. And then I, I particularly liked it um, how at first I thought they were going to the root of, oh, let's make OJ a sympathetic character by showing that he no longer has friends. He can no longer get um, a reservation table. or a table at his favorite country club. And then that wasn't the tone that's not where they took it. It was sort of like, yeah, he may have been acquitted. However, you know, in the eyes of, of many people in the public, he is guilty, and this has changed his life. And and in and, and Robert Kardashian, I mean, David Schwimmer yes. actually turned. I mean, I think he had a very interesting performance all the way through. I thought he was. I thought great. he was great. He was really good. One of the unsung, you know, actors of this show. Mm -hmm. Everyone talks about. Um, uh, Sarah Paulson and Courtney B. And, Vance, Courtney B. Vance. and Sterling K. Brown. You have to have a middle initial to be on the show. Wait, Sterling um, K. Brown is Darden. Darden, yes. Right. Yeah, everyone talks about them. No one really talks about yeah. David Schwimmer. Schwimmer, he's the only person where I looked at him and I didn't even think it was David Schwimmer. Like, I had to really remind myself. I knew it was David Schwimmer. But I, I still know, think it was you know a very I mean? good I mean, and, and the funny thing is, is that at the very beginning, I was kind of annoyed by him, like his whininess. And yeah. there was that whole scene in the beginning about OJ trying to kill himself in, in Kimmy's room. No, not <laughs> Kimmy's room. Yes. But the Kardashian stuff didn't really, you know. I, I, I actually think that one of the flaws of the show is that they did so much stunt casting with the Kardashians and Faye Resnick that turned out to be really not much of anything right. having to do with the show. They were in the show, like Faye Resnick. Yeah. Um, Connie Britton was Connie one Britton's, episode. Yeah, Faye Resnick was in for like two, one or two episodes yeah. and that was it. Um, but I think overall it was a great season finale. I think it was a great season um, I'm a little concerned about season two, which is going to focus on Hurricane Katrina. I'm very interested in that. I think it could be really good, especially if they do like the um, the standoff at the um, at the bridge where they wouldn't let um, uh, the New Orleans cross into the West Bank, and they stop them with the police. I, there's, I think, there's a lot of possibilities. I do there. think there are a lot of possibilities, but who are we following? Is my question. A bunch like, of who are the players, and are they real people? Do you think that the success of this had something to do with playing into, you know, what we know and seeing it again? And you know, they very deliberately would show the scene, and then they show the scene through the television yes. lens, which is how we all saw yes. it. Um, so yeah, I, it, it will be different in that sense. It but I, I, after this season, I have like a lot of faith in. I mean, it wasn't Ryan Murphy's. He wasn't like he didn't have his hands all over it clearly. Um, but whoever is running the show for him, you know. Kudos. But he directed last night's episode, did he? Yeah, I read that somewhere. Um, all right, so that was People vs. OJ. We'll have to wait until the summer for our next OJ documentary, the 30 for 30 series. I can't wait. 
Um, all right, Walking Dead finale. Bobby, do you watch The Walking Dead? I oh, do watch The Walking Dead. Does he Dead. watch The Walking okay, Dead? Okay, good, because I do not. Mm -hmm. My only contribution to this conversation will be uh, Negan, played by Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Hottie, that's it, that's all I got. And, and charming. And yeah. always charming. Yeah. Yeah. Always charming. Even with the bat with the barbed wire. See, I know yeah. some stuff. Yeah, in a murderous kind of way. Okay, so Bobby, The Walking Dead finale. Creatively bankrupt? Yes or no? <laughs> Uh, drawn out dra and drawing out just a few minutes of action and oh. just a whole lot of tedium and uh, and leaving on a cliffhanger like that I walking dead the the, the finales usually have are you, you kind of expect a main character to be often in, the, in these finales and that I mean it sort of happened but we both well, you we also just expect quote, something unquote, exciting to happen yeah. in the finale and I guess yeah. something exciting happened we just don't know what it was yeah <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, uh, j just the, and then the whole thing with Carol and oh, just Morgan just won't let her go, and it's like, well, you've been stabbed and shot in the arm and shot in the leg, and you're laying there and you're saying, just let me die. Like, I don't know, I might just be like, oh, all right, I'm gonna take my horse and go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think I think Carol was actually probably more problematic for me than the, the whole Negan thing. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's lame to do a cliffhanger like that and not give you any idea who was killed. It does not make me want to tune in again at all. But my problem with Carol is that the last four episodes of the season, they completely did a personality overhaul on her. I don't really explain why. Or, I mean, yeah. like, I, I don't understand what's going on there at all. And she was one of the best characters. Yeah, and I, and just the whole thing when her and Maggie were taken captive and she starts to hyperventilate and Which it just was a good episode. yeah and that, that was a good episode and it just seemed like oh well she's definitely doing this just so she can get out of her restraints and just like kill everybody mm -hmm. which I, she that still happened but mm -hmm. just the fact that that was supposed to be the the real turning point for her that she just like couldn't deal with all this anymore and couldn't deal with killing for people she loved and couldn't deal with loving and couldn't deal with anything <laughs> else anymore and uh, yeah and it, it, it just it just seemed like too sharp of a turn for her. I mean, we ha okay, so now we have finally introduced Negan, so we have um, the Grimes gang up against another uber villain. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the worst one so far. This is the it? worst well, one so far. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I just don't understand. I mean, it's the apocalypse. Mm -hmm. um, we have a limited amount of stories to tell, and they keep telling the same story over and over again. I mentioned to you earlier, I watched the... Um, the uh, first episode of Fear the Walking Dead, which returns on Sunday for its second season. And while um, I did like the episode in and of itself, I feel that um, the whole idea behind Fear the Walking Dead on the West Coast, just as the zombie apocalypse is breaking out, is all about the, the, the you know, civilization, cr sorry, civilization crumbling, and they didn't really show it that much, and now it's just another survival story, and who can you trust? And are they out to get us? Can we work together? How evil are men? You know, they're worse than zombies. It's the same thing. Yeah, but they're on a yacht now. They're on a yacht now, <laughs> mostly. They're also on a yacht on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Really? Thank yeah. you, Erin. You're welcome. Are there zombies? There are. There are man-eating creatures. They're in Dubai. So no. Really? My, yes. My mom watches that. Does she? Yeah. She doesn't know where Dubai is, though. Oh. Yeah. She admitted that to me. That's fine. And now I'm admitting that to everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so you guys, uh, I heard a lot of people were really disappointed with the Walk Walking Dead finale because you don't find out who Negan kills at the end. It like yes. sort of blood splatter and then... Right. It's well, it's filmed from the victim's point of view. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And, uh, and I mean, you know, with a little bit of Googling, you know, you can find out in the comics who, who gets offed. But I, whether they're going to stick to that, I mean, I would guess that they do for, for something as big you, as you this. You think so? Yeah, I'm gonna if I if I had to bet money on it, I would bet that what happened in the comics with that that scene is what it's gonna be. See, I I would bet that it'd be one of these second tier characters like Rosita or Abraham or Eugene mm -hmm. or somebody that we met later on. We don't really care that much about because it seems like for the last season everybody seems to get rescued. Yeah, I mean, everybody I'm not really gonna give away too much, but I, I my my bet is that the uh, one of the the more main characters is gonna be. Well, that would be bold. Yeah, it would, would be, be bold. Unlike what they've been doing. It would be bold, and it would redeem them, in my eyes, a little bit for mm -hmm. the way that they just sort of but not stumbled like... through the end. Go ahead. So the show returns in six months, I guess. Yeah, yeah. usually, usually Halloween-ish. Yeah. yeah, so that's when you'll find out. 
And then, well, actually, I mean, are you, you not going to watch? I mean, she's going to watch. No, I'm going to yeah. watch. It's my job I mean, to watch. I'm this is why watch. they can do this. But to the you other guys. thing that's interesting is that, um, you know, it's like Game of Thrones, and when Jon Snow died, there's like all these eyes allegedly. on the set. Allegedly. 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 I don't believe it. Um, but there's all these eyes, and there's so much behind the scenes stuff going on that, you know, we may find out before then. Yeah. Right. All right, well, that was The Walking Dead. Yes. A show that I do not watch, but I may, because you guys know I've been, you know, sort of dipping my toes into shows that I haven't watched previously, so maybe I'll watch a couple episodes from season one. You really should just watch the the, the first episode. It's All right. really good. All right, I'm in. Yeah. This weekend, I will watch the first episode of The Walking Dead. And then you'll Dead. watch the second, because it's hard to not. And actually, the first here. season's only six episodes, right? Yeah. Oh. And the whole thing's good. All yeah. right. All right, all right, kind of starts to not so good in the second season. Well, you know, another show where I watch more than one episode, The Ranch. Wow. <laughs> I was the one who told you to watch more than one episode and I only watched one I episode. I can't believe that. I'm like, because like, oh, did you watch the new Ashton Kutcher? It's, it's a it's a different take on the three camera comedy. It is. You should watch a couple episodes. It, I'm like, you okay. <laughs> so we're talking watch about it now. We're, I'm sorry. I was, I was very busy watching a lot of other stuff. All right, so tell us about The Ranch. Um, the Ranch, is, uh, it's sort of like a mini That 70s Show reunion. Um, stars Ashton Kutcher and Danny Masterson as brothers. Um, Sam Elliott, the great Sam Elliott, is his uh, is their father. And he is semi-estranged from his wife, played by the great Deborah Winger. And it's, it is, you know, Netflix. Don't forget uh, Alicia what? Cuthbert. Yes, I'm sorry. Did she show up in the second episode or was she the first one? Oh, you're right. That I'm sorry. Was, oh, yes, that was the one you didn't watch. Yeah, that's why I didn't watch. Yeah, sorry. Mm-hmm. Alicia, sorry, Alicia, for you Alicia Cuthbert fans out there, sorry. <laughs> um, so, you know, Netflix is always trying to do different things, and what they did here is they took a traditional multicam studio audience sitcom, but they're sort of making a dramedy out of it that you would see, you know, the sort of... It's, it's sort of like Orange is the New Black, except... Or, or Shameless. You know, the, this mixture of comedy and pathos um but as a as a traditional sitcom i don't really think it works with a terrible laugh track let's let's yeah. not leave that part yeah. yeah because it has the kind of laugh track where every single joke is funny like yeah. not just like haha funny like ha, 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 funny. oh and then there's this one terrible joke that keeps running through where ashton kutcher wears the uggs, uggs and his father can't stand it there's like 17 jokes because about only it. girls wear uggs yes um, apparently I, I think actually what it more remind it, it didn't remind me so much of like you know two and a half men which you know it's you know it's basically the same kind of set all that kind of stuff but um it actually reminded me a little bit of of um we've talked about a lot on the family and a lot of the sitcoms in the 70s that did more routinely mix you know poignancy and emotional notes with you know yes. haha humor. let's not forget Edith's rape scene where she yes. ends up coffee <laughs> hysterical and there, there's right. the laughter <laughs> um so I thought it was interesting to watch. I don't want to keep watching it, obviously. Right. But, you know, kudos to Netflix for trying something new. Not kudos to Netflix. Really? This show is terrible. Don't watch it. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> That's all you have to say about it, seriously. I mean, it's not funny. Okay. At right. all. All right. American Idol. 15, year, 15 years, right? Yeah. It's been on 15 seasons. 15 seasons. 15 yeah. seasons. I remember it premiered on my birthday <laughs> back, what was that, 2001? 2002. 2002. The ultimate gift. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, American Idol. Um, we've seen a lot of success come out of the show. It's clearly the most successful reality competition show. By far. Yeah. By far. Um, and, you know, I I used to be a loyal watcher. Vicky watched up until season 10. Mm-hmm. Bobby, have you seen every single season? Uh, I've watched... Most of most or all of every season except for season nine. I was in college and busy, and I and Drinking. I still no not <laughs> not working actually. But the uh, but that I still think was probably the the worst season anyway. I think I you missed the worst who season. Won. Yeah, that, who won? that was Lee DeWise oh. versus Crystal Bauer yeah. no, in the fight, I like in the fight of the century. Yeah, but Lee DeWise won. He did. It win. was a pretty weak season. Yeah. yeah, and that's it. And that was the season that that uh, Tori Kelly tried out and didn't make top twenty four. <laughs> And now, look at her now. Well, Where's Lee Dwyer? <laughs> I'm covering a Tori Kelly concert in a couple, in a couple of weeks. That I'm not going to. Um, because because it's sold out. Whatever. <laughs> Bobby and I have issues. Yeah. Um, so, you know, throughout Idol, there have been some amazing performances. 
there have been some pretty terrible performances. William Hung, let's not forget him. Oh, remember Sanjaya? Yes. Uh, Sanjaya Malakar. I mean, geez. Yeah. Um, that, that actually, can I just point out that, that like Sanjaya is the reason why I sort of grew disgusted with American Idol and switched my allegiances to The Voice because I just feel on The Voice you're starting at a higher level and you don't let these like really crappy people in and other people get sacrificed to the mm -hmm. gods of, oh, he's so cute. Oh, well, Bobby watched the American Idol mini doc that was on last night, yep. as did I. Mm -hmm. And it's funny that you mentioned that, Vicky, because the, one of the producers said when they brought the show over, um, Fox was like, well, Americans like to root for people. And like they don't want to see the, the bad people. And they don't want Simon Cowell to be mean. And the creator of American Idol or one of the producers was like, well, that's not what this show is. And they say they consciously make an effort to pick the very best and the, the very, very worst. worst. Yeah. There's no middle. And so that's what they were going for. And I think a lot of people, you know, did grow tired of the really terrible singers and audition rounds. Um, and that's why they stopped watching. But that was always my favorite part. Yeah, I mean, really? they, they've, the last couple seasons, they have showed very few bad ones. I mean, they've really gotten away from that. Like, going back and looking and seeing the clips from last night of just how all the bad people that they would show. They've re I think that they've been in tune with the fact that people have grown tired of that. Mm -hmm. They've sort of and gone more of the voice route where they're show where they're really highlighting the good people. Although I have to say my guilty pleasure was Hollywood Week and the team performances when there oh, was yeah. so much drama. Oh, it's always still, so always drama. much drama. Yeah. Always drama. Yeah, the big thing this year for those who weren't watching, um, the one of the top three who's left, Trent Harmon, he had mono during Hollywood oh Week. Oh my god! Gross. And for the first time ever, he had they had to do a group round with one person because he was contagious and he couldn't uh. be in a group. <laughs> and so he has to go up there by himself, uh. and he's like, you know, like can barely stand up, and then he he sings well enough and uh, and gets through. Well but enough. Yeah. Yeah, but but since then he he's. He's been great, and I, I think he uh, has a real shot to win. To sure. win. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about some of our favorite performances uh, throughout the years. I have a terrible memory, um, so mine are not going to be that great. But I have such a long list. Do you? I do. We don't want to go through the oh, whole yeah. okay. We don't have all day, Vicki. But give us your top two. My top, oh my god. Um, I have so many. Um, Okay, go to Bobby first, because I can't even decide my top two. Um, as far as, but some of it's apples and oranges, as far as, you know, quote unquote best, but the, the really memorable ones that, when Carrie Underwood did Hearts Alone, mm -hmm. that one I really, really remember vividly. Fantasia doing Summertime, which I think Billboard just ranked as their favorite. Mm -hmm. um, that, that one was great. And even more recently, season 11, Jessica Sanchez, who was like this stick thin, like 16 year old girl, just belting out Whitney Houston's uh, I will always love you. It was like a huge moment, like the first one of the first big moments in a while on that show. I would go back to season one, mm -hmm. my favorite season, mm -hmm. um, and basically any Kelly Clarkson performance during the top ten, like yeah. all of them. Yeah, and when she went and did uh, "I Surrender" by Celine Dion when she was sick, and, mm -hmm. it, and just like it still wasn't that bad. Yeah, that that that's a memorable. She's one. amazing. Okay, yes, so I'm you. combining two in one okay. because one of the things that I really enjoyed about American Idol um, was uh, the twist that some of the artists would give to songs like, yes, I love hearing a great Whitney Houston cover as much as the next person, but when there's actually like a musical moment like, and I will give you an example, David Lee Cook doing Hello and um, Brooke White doing Love is a Battlefield where they take these pop songs, these arguably cheesy pop songs, they slow it down, they, you know, they make it different. There's nothing cheesy about Love is a okay, Battlefield. Okay, I, I agree. I agree. Okay, I was referring to Hello. <laughs> okay. I was really referring to Hello. Right. The only song, I think, from American Idol I actually have on, uh, you know, I have bought is, is Brooke White's Love is a Battlefield, which I just think are, I just think they're, they're really powerful, interesting moments. It's not just like amazing karaoke. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, you just mentioned it, my favorite moment, my favorite performance is, is Fantasia Summertime, which mm -hmm. was just just absolutely magical. She came there on the stage, and it was a combination of, you know, the positioning of herself on the floor. I was going to say, the, this is the one where she was sitting yes, the floor. Yes, the yeah. gown, um, her hand movements. Like, you could argue that, um, you know, that was very, you know, somebody could say, oh, you know, that was some... Um, studied and everything but like I've met Fantasia I spent time with her and like I really think that came from her heart mm -hmm. I just loved that performance speaking of people sitting on the floor and performances I'd also like to bring up Catherine McKinney. yes 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 cherry tree 
Right? Well, Wait, that, no. That's when she, yeah. she was on the uh, the cajon, the uh, the drum thing. Yeah, no, not that, that one. one. No, when she, no. Did when she did Somewhere Over the yeah. Rainbow. Yeah, she okay. just came back to do that last week or two weeks ago. Oh, did she? No, yeah. that was amazing. But you do love Cherry Tree, right? Yeah, that was yeah. good too. Yeah, well, that, uh, yeah, we'll talk more about that season in a little while. Okay. Oh, oh will we? Oh, okay. We, we will. It's uh, scheduled programming. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> so, besides the, the performers, a huge part of American Idol um, are the, or is the, the judging panel. Mm -hmm. And through the years, they've had, how many judges do we know, Bobby? Oh, if you uh, if you keep talking, I'll count. Okay, yeah. so I'll keep talking, but I or we can just go through them. We know we had Simon Cowell, Paula Abdul, Randy Jackson, Jackson. Um, the the woman Cara Diaguardi. Cara Diaguardi, right ten judges. I think it's ten. Yeah. All right, we had Cara, we had Steven Tyler, we had Mariah, we had Nikki, we had J Lo, Ellen DeGeneres. Ellen DeGeneres. That was terrible. No, we had more than ten. Steven Tyler, uh, uh, Harry Connick Jr. And did we have Keith Urban? Yeah. 12. That's 12? That's 12. Okay. I think we got them all. Um, I will say, hands down, best judge ever, Simon Cowell. Of course. I yeah. mean. He's the show. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you can't argue with, with a Simon Cowell insult. But he's not the show anymore. He's no, he's not. not. I, I look, I look at the ratings. I look what happened. Well, yeah. we, we have a clip of some of Simon's best. We don't have a clip. What? I put it in the folder. How do you put it in the folder? <laughs> she put it in the folder. I put it in the folder, people. You want to go okay. Else well, you know what? We'll, we'll go someplace because I want to hear the insults. <laughs> All right, we'll go someplace else and come back. But well, let's talk about the judges a little more. Who do you think was the worst? Ellen DeGeneres. Judge? It has to be Ellen DeGeneres. No, Nicki she Minaj. was. Oh no, Ellen DeGeneres. Mm -hmm. Basically, she didn't say anything. Yeah. Ellen DeGeneres the entire season. Yeah. There was not one she bit was very of like. Nice. She was yeah. way too nice. There was nothing constructive, and you know, I know that she. Um, I don't know if she's a, a label or she helps artists. Move yeah, on. I'm like sorry, yeah. but she has she had nothing to say really about anybody except oh you're you know that was great I really enjoyed that I mean nothing at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and oh. uh, I, I thought Cara Diaguardi was pretty uh, pretty cookie cutter too when she was on, but the whole see it was season. Uh, 12 was the Nicki Minaj Mariah Carey oh, that season was a disaster. where there was just they were just at odds constantly right and uh and it was just it, it took away from the that. show yeah exactly yeah, yeah. and then, like and that. Nicki Minaj like showing up late for like a live show and like getting there like, that. not being there for the first couple songs right. for whatever reason like right a lot of people so behavior yeah. that season yeah. um that I think turned a, a lot of people off yeah um because I love Mariah Carey but that was unnecessary um, so I would say the wackiest judge we can probably all agree is Paula Abdul. No? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there, there's yeah. a good level of wackiness yeah. for her. Like her, I, on, I honestly don't, don't miss Paula Abdul. I, I don't miss Randy Jackson. I found him very tedious. Mm. Yeah, by the end I found him yeah. tedious. By the end, yeah. I agree. I think yeah. he had war as well. Well, we have our Simon Cowell insults, so, uh, let's take a listen. For you YouTubers, YouTube it. <laughs> I mean, look, the cruise ship line is funny because we all know that Jennifer Hudson was a cruise ship line singer. And there are a lot of cruise ship line singers on The Voice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, I mean, good singers. Yeah. As a cruiser, there are good singers on the yeah. cruise ship. Um, I do want to talk really quickly about the whole Jennifer Hudson uh, being voted off early, which everyone has deemed as the most shocking moment in American Idol history. 
Um, I think it's more shocking in hindsight than it actually yeah. was in the moment. No, I thought in the moment it was shocking. No, in the moment it was shocking, but there were a lot of shocking moments, I think, that are like Chris Daughtry, I mean, yeah. getting voted off. There were a lot of moments just like that, but looking back on it now, I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, you won an Oscar. Yeah, yeah. well, the, I think what was more shocking, and watching that little documentary thing last night showed it, how they had Fantasia, Jennifer Hudson, and Latoya London, who was also very good, mm -hmm. in a group of three on stage when they were doing the elimination, and then they had three other people in the group of Whose three. Whose names we don't recall. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> then the one guy... white. And then... No. One of them was... Yeah. Uh, oh, George Huff. And then, well, George Huff, they, they yeah. told him to go to the oh, group that was, that, w that was safe, and he went to the, the group of Fantasia, yes. obviously. And then it, right, Ryan Seacrest was like, no, go to the group that's safe. And everyone oh was like, God. what? Right. They were in the bottom yeah. three. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, cringe-worthy moments. But I will yeah. say that I recall when that happened, everyone's like up in arms about Jennifer Hudson being kicked off. I personally did not like Jennifer Hudson on American Idol. Yeah. I thought she was a very loud singer. Yeah. Um, Honestly, like yeah. I can't. I, if you put a gun to my head and said name one song she sang on American Idol, I don't really remember. And I watched that whole season. Right. Yeah. I did too. And I thought, you know, I thought she was a screamer. Yeah. She was a screamer she singer. Was. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what she won the Oscar for because her yeah. acting was not the, was not yeah. that great in Dreamgirls. Mm -hmm. um, so you know. Whatever. Hasn't had a hit since. I'm not hating on Jennifer Hudson. Yeah. I just think she gets way more credit than she should, personally. Um, all right, so let's move on. Who do you guys think was the most undeserved finalist? That was one of the things that we talked about talking about. The most undeserved finalist or the most or undeserved winner. winner? Maybe winner. Oh. Um. The most undeserving winner that... Either Lee DeWise was was rough, like that. That's just, the fact that he won that season is insane. Yeah. And then the uh, the the past season, the season that just finished, Nick Fradiani, I, I would argue might be the worst singer, like the the worst singer of the winners. Even though yeah. I, I like him as a person, mm -hmm. but I uh, I thought he was one of the worst. And then in in season five, which I I I. I think that Taylor Hicks winning was the beginning of the end for America. Yeah, we, we are not members of the Soul Patrol here. No. But I thought he had a good voice. Yeah. But he wasn't like a, a pop star. N no. And, and no, just, just there was better oh. people that year. Mm -hmm. It's just... Although I can't really think of any. I mean, Catherine McPhee had a great voice, yeah. but I don't think Chris, she was like, you know, brimming with charisma. Okay. Chris Daughtry absolutely should have oh, won. Yes. Oh, yes. Chris Daughtry yeah, yeah, yeah. got kicked off. Catherine mm -hmm. McPhee absolutely was should have Was that Elliot you mean? Um... No, I don't think so. I okay. think he was on a season or two before. But I think Chris Daughtry fared pretty well. Yes, <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah, he's done. Okay. He was. He was in. Um, he was Judas. Okay. He was in the Judas passion. In the passion. That really great live yes. show on Fox. Um, I don't have any because I can't remember crap. So sure, whatever Bobby just said. Uh, maybe let's talk about um, the ejection that pains us the yes. most. Where we're still like, I cannot believe that this person got voted off of American Idol. I know that we have some clips. We're going to play a little game where um, everyone chose a vocal from that person, and then the other two people have to guess who it is. Mm -hmm. So let's go with Bobby's first. Chris Daughtry. Wow, OK. <laughs> that was easy. So Bobby, why do you think? Uh, why did that ejection pain you so uh, much? Well, it, it was, well, first off, it was one of the great shocks of my young life. Um, and <laughs> and it, looking looking back at the clip and watching his face, he couldn't believe it either. No, yeah. no, nobody else could believe it. But yeah, he was just, the whole way through, he was just the, the obvious, like, most polished and interesting and unique kind of voice. And at, even though Bo Bice the year before was pretty good, Bo Bice. who made the who made the final, Chris Daughtry was the mm -hmm. first really great straight down the line rock singer. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I mean for I'm a rock fan that that resonated with me, and just the fact that he got voted off just like I just couldn't believe it. I would that that yeah that bothered me a lot more than the Jennifer Hudson thing. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do mine next. Hold on, Vicky's not ready. I was just checking something okay. for mine. Yeah. Oh, uh, Haley. 
Yes. Reinhardt. Haley Reinhardt. Haley Reinhardt. She was very good. Oh, she, she was her very, voice, very good. I think she may have one of the most unique voices that's ever been on Idol, at least for the seasons that I watch. Mm -hmm. Um, and I loved her. I really wanted her to win. Who won that season? Scotty McCreary. Oh, that's the season I stopped watching. Yeah. Mm. Well, that, that was well, season 10? That season was mm. like just plagued with upsets. But that, that season had, was, was a good year. That had a lot of different dynamic kind of people, including Haley. And yeah, I thought that down, when it came down the stretch, like she, she made the push, but it was just like the country voters were just out right. that year. I also don't think she made, I mean, obviously that was Benny and the Jets, but I don't think she made great song choices that season mm -hmm. where maybe they were just, like, people were just not feeling them. Um, but if you want to hear from Haley Reinhardt, she doesn't have a band, but she has an awesome uh, cover of Creep that you can mm -hmm. find on YouTube, and she's featured in the Extra Gum commercial where the two people go through their lives. I, it, the song is Can't Help Falling in Love. You've definitely seen it. I don't know, I haven't watched a commercial in several years. All right, well, <laughs> that's where you can hear Haley Reinhardt in an extra commercial. Let's listen to Vicky's choice. Oh, oh is this uh, Stumped him. Is this know. Melinda Doolittle? It is, and I picked this song because no. it wasn't one of her classic, you know, you My Funny Valentine. Melinda she Dula? was amazing! She had... What? I love Melinda Doolittle. Yeah. It was it was a, it was yeah. kind of a lame season, if you recall. It was Blake Lewis and Jordan Sparks in the end. Jordan Sparks, you know, I'm nothing against Jordan Sparks. I don't think she's particularly special. I actually really like Blake Lewis too, but I wanted to pick that song because it comes from what I think was one of the strongest episodes of American Idol ever. It was the Bon Jovi episode, oh. and it was awesome. It was so okay. great. Do you remember Bobby the Bon Jovi episode? Um, yeah, I remember Blake, Blake Lewis did the uh, his beatbox version of You, Lo you Just Love Me. Yeah, oh, that's what I, that's what I remember most about it. But Melinda Doolittle, I would say, is pound for pound one of probably top twenty five best singers. Thank in the you. Brand. I did not think Thank that was that. Just listening she to was that good. clip, I, didn't I, know. I did okay. pick that one. It was, I mean, my funny Valentine, I think, is the better vocal, okay. but I thought yeah. this one would confuse you a little bit. That, that season with Jordan Sparks, like near the end. That that was one of those things that in the finale there there was no way that she wasn't gonna win over mm. Blake Lewis. So when you when you go back, was not a very good singer. No, I mean, he, he wasn't. He was just he, he had a his it whole vibe. Did he yeah. have like the blonde spiky hair? Kinda? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He had he had like a whole his whole. His whole he was persona, adorable. Yeah. Was that like by the time by the time those people started coming around, they figured out the game. Like the mm. if you go back in in that documentary from last night and you look at the first season of American Idol, like the outfits that people were wearing. Well, Jennifer Hudson. Oh my God. I mean, <laughs> you like they did not have a wardrobe budget then. They were all living yeah. in the house. They were doing those. Oh, that's right. They don't live in the house anymore. They just stay in the hotel, right? Right. And you don't mm. see that you know, part of their lives. Yeah. Um, it. I mean, boy. And then after a while, like pe people like Adam Lambert came around, and you could mm -hmm. tell like, oh, he's a seasoned artist, and he has the look. Yeah. whatever that look was going for him um and it just became a different show it became too big for itself mm -hmm. i think and you know they were saying again in the documentary which i encourage everyone to watch um that that first season they were like begging people in malls to audition because they had right. no idea what the show was um but now how many people line up to audition thousands yeah i mean it, i mean it's been dwindling a little bit with everything else with american idol but yeah the uh yeah, thousands of stadiums full of people. Yeah. So American Idol's ending after 15 seasons. Bobby, we know the voice is on. Voice has not produced anyone near the level of uh, Carrie Underwood or Kelly Clarkson, Kelly Clarkson or Daughtry or Chris mm -hmm. Daughtry. Um, do you think, well, in your music critic opinion, how many years left do you think the voice has? And do you think that they will be able to produce a superstar? Well, I think that now that Idol is going to go away, I think The Voice, I don't know, it could go one of two ways, where now it sort of has the, the little monopoly and can go a little bit longer, or it just shows that people are starting to get tired of this kind of format. And The Voice format, which really is starting to drag, because they, they have not changed a thing except for, except for judges. Right. Do you think it's a misstep to do it twice a year? Uh, I'm stu I didn't think so before, because I couldn't get enough of it for a mm -hmm. while, but I think now they might be better off just doing it once a year. I mean, it's a whole problem also like with something like Project Runway where, you know, I mean, obviously there are always great singers, but from this season of The Voice, it doesn't seem like there are that many great singers anymore. Mm. Yeah. I See, mean, I, I think there are a lot of really good singers this year, but I think 
there's a lot of people who are really good, like sort of session, like studio singers, mm -hmm. that they're not the most interesting people. Mm -hmm. And with Idol, you've always, even for better or worse, you've always had a lot of extra time with these people and gotten to know them more. And they've just, they've just been sort of more interesting kind of people than mm -hmm. the voice people who it's like, oh, well, I had a career for a while, then it went away, and now I'm, now I'm doing this. And right. I'm an amazing singer, and... I should win. Yeah, and go buy my iTunes songs. But I think you're right, that the format also, it's like, they, they okay, this is your battle, and yeah. then they have a meeting with the uh, with the mentor, mm -hmm. and then they have another meeting with the mentor, and yeah. then they, it's just like, it's like, I could just fast forward through it at this point. Right. Just give yeah. me the song. I watched the first two seasons, I think, of The Voice, and then I was over it. I was over the format almost immediately. Uh, see, the, I think after the first two was when it really started to gain steam and get the end. I think the sweet spot was like season three when Cassidy Pope won. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was maybe their best season, just like in the pocket of the fandom and everything. Well, I would like to end this American Idol retrospective by saying rest in peace, Brian Dunkelman's career. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was he on the... Uh, was, did he make a special appearance last night of the special? No, There were no. clips where he was in the clips. Yeah, yeah. But, but they didn't, they didn't, have, they didn't yeah. have an interview. They did not bring him back. Yeah. Or he did decline to participate. We don't know. Um, but poor... Who, who cares? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I love how it also, also in the documentary was like, American Idol turned Ryan Seacrest and Simon Cowell into billionaires, or like yeah. millionaires or whatever. And it's like, oh, oh Ryan, don't poor Ryan. Just rub it in. Yeah. It's all in the wound. Yeah, he was trying to fix the antenna on his TV to watch the <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, maybe we can get Brian Dunkelman on this show oh, to discuss yeah. what After all this, I'm sure he'd be happy to come on. Hey, look, Brian, attraction. we'd be happy to chat with you. You never know how it could turn out. Yeah. Brian, I don't know if you know this, but we're on YouTube now. <laughs> <laughs> and we have two people watching. One of them is us. So <laughs> on that note, that will do it for this episode of TV Hangover. Uh, Vicky and I will be back next week to discuss something. Who knows what? Something, something. We'll figure it out, and we'll probably take up Randy's idea, so we'll start mm -hmm. thinking about uh, how did this get made, uh, specific shows. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at TV Hangover Show, at E underscore Meds, at Vicky High, V-I-C-K-I-H-Y, uh, and at Bobby Olivier. And... Follow, uh, like our podcast on iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, all those places, and watch our YouTube video, guys, nj.com. We will see you next week. Can I unplug? Um, Can I unplug? Um, yeah, you can unplug. Thank you for joining. Right, thanks for having me, guys. Thanks. You're welcome. I'm still taping? I think so. <laughs> you have to hit the button. No, there is no button.